Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, March 12, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, DevOps is the way to develop software these days and part of the DevOps paradigm is to automate a lot of actions. And there are a number of systems that can be used to automate, for example, the build process of software. And one tool that does this is Stackstorm. Stackstorm is sort of event-based, so you can code basically if something happens, then do something else in order to, for example, keep software built or run it through different checks and balances before actually building it or making it live. In order to do all of this, the software, of course, has to run at elevated privileges. And typically, DevOps tools it's not only run at elevated privileges, but even if they don't, they do have access to your source code and uh, quite a bit of uh, power when it comes to actually building and also modifying your software. So it isn't good that Stackstorm had a cross-site scripting vulnerability due to the way they actually sanitized and echoed back the cross-origin request service headers or course headers and as a result, an attacker could trick a victim that's logged into Stackstorm to essentially execute arbitrary actions, which almost then would become a remote code execution vulnerability via cross-site scripting. So first of all, don't underestimate cross-site scripting. I mentioned that before. And then watch these DevOps tools. Uh, I think this is there's really still a lot more to come. We already have seen some vulnerabilities in other popular tools like Jenkins and the like. So access to these tools should be tightly controlled and also make sure that you monitor how these tools are being used. And researchers at the University of Bonn in Germany did an interesting study looking at the code quality from different freelance developers. And in order to conduct this study, they set up a task on freelancer.org, which by all accounts is a cheaper sort of low-end site where you can get people to write code for you. Now, the task they gave them was to essentially write a system to store passwords. So a system with some very obvious security implications. Well, uh, what they found was that developers did not hash the passwords. Also, that developers uh, were often confused about the differences between hashing and encrypting. A lot of developers they hired did actually use base64 encoding for passwords. And probably most interesting, was that the security quality of the code did not really depend on how much developer was paid, but granted, I don't think the payment was what I would sort of really consider market rate. The top payment being offered for this particular task was 200 euro. I think the real lesson here is if you do hire freelancers to write code for you, you have to be extremely careful about how you write your specifications. You definitely do have to add security requirements. This may be a little bit different for in-house developers where sort of some of this is more implied in the culture of the organization where you have told them once and they hopefully remember it that security is a big deal and should be considered. And talking about developers, ESET has an interesting story about some malware they looked into that apparently was targeting developers at Asian online game manufacturers. Now, online gaming is always in the crosshairs of attackers, lots of bad stuff going on there. But in this case, they targeted specifically the developers essentially launching a supply chain attack in order to then affect the software being written by these developers. The end effect is that software written by these developers includes a backdoor that will then download additional malware. What's in particular bad here is that one company in particular in Thailand was not responding to any reports about this attack being sent to them by ESET. 
Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.